Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I got this channel right here sent to my Instagram DMs. It's called AOC Network. And it seems like it has a lot of interesting videos. Like it has something biblical may come in 2023. God's people must prepare. Proof of the, proof of the Antichrist spirit has already possessed many. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to actually watch the last video they posted about two weeks ago. Something biblical may come in 2023. God's people must prepare. So let's see what they have to say in this video. What could possibly come in 2023? Hopefully it's not just clickbait. It has 800,000 views. So I'm thinking that it's actually saying some important things in this video. Okay, so let's see what's going on. Remove worldly distractions. If you have seen our Hosea prophecy video or the numerous Bible prophecy videos covering why around 2030 might be a significant time in history, then you will also know that there is a great chance that 2023, seven years prior to that, may also be a huge marker in Bible prophecy. And so as we move into this new year, be advised. Some of you may endure some things in your personal life. And I must say this, it will not be to break you, but to prepare you for God's power to operate in your life. Remember what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12. He wrote how God revealed to him that his power is made perfect in weakness. Mm. And then Paul said, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest upon me. You see, Paul was beaten, Damn. mocked, thrown in prison, many hardships, but he was a man also of power. The Holy Spirit was able to use him without hindrance he healed, even raised the dead. Why? Because when you endure and overcome hardships while keeping the faith and being on God's side, it positions you to experience his power. Mm. This is why Paul said. That makes mad sense. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight, delight in weakness in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. How is he strong? As he said in the earlier verse, because Christ's power is made perfect in weakness. And because of his weaknesses, That's because deep. of his hardships, Yo. he endured faithfully and received the power of God. So Man. friends, what some of you uh, are currently enduring and will endure. It will not be to break you, but to position you for Holy Spirit power. And the key, listen, the key is when that test comes, you have to pass. You have to pass. And so how do you do that? Yeah, don't don't think of it as like don't think of it as like school or like an exam. It's like okay, okay, what do I what do I do next? It's just having faith. Is literally just having faith that the Holy Spirit is going to guide you through this. So it's really just like it dwindles down to your faith. That's that's how you pass the test per se. I don't really like that though. Faithful. Yeah, see. Remember, when Joseph was thrown into the pit by his brothers and made a slave, well, he was then in servitude for years. And he likely had no idea what would happen to him. He probably felt abandoned by God. But he wasn't abandoned by God. In fact, God used him to powerfully save not only his family, but the entire nation. But the spark for that was, number one, him experiencing hardship. And number two, remaining righteous through those hardships. Yeah. And that's what he Because I realize, I realize when people go through hardships, you start to realize, like, yo, like, how am I about to get through this on my own? I'm feeling weak. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. The power of God needs to pull through. And then when the power of God pulls through, then it, that's when that's when people's faith becomes all like that much stronger. So a lot of the times like when the devil attacks and like you win and win and win and win that you only get stronger and closer with God. 
He did not curse God. No, he served God, even in prison. And he continued to resist sin, which is evidenced by how he refused to sleep with Potiphar's wife when she came on to him. And so he passed. And resisting sin is defeating the devil. Like, Eve didn't really defeat the devil. She, she fell into that temptation. Test and entered his purpose. Same with Job. This man lost everything, his family, his wealth, and even his health. And so he had the hardship, and then he added to that righteousness. How so? Because even during that hardship, he continued to serve God. He never once cursed God, and he continued to worship God. He didn't blame God. And when he lost things, when he lost money, he would say things like, Well, the Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. When he lost loved ones, he would say things like, Though he slay me, yet I will hope in him. Those around him thought he was insane for how he continued to serve this God, even though his life was falling apart. But it was that faith, that perseverance, that righteousness, even in the middle of hardship, that allowed him to pass his test. He made up his mind. He was going to keep the faith. And so he passed the test. And of course, God restored him with more than he even had before. And in the resurrection, he will receive even more than that. And so to those of you who are experiencing a test right now or are about to experience a test, I want you to hear something. Not long ago, the Spirit of the Lord led me to randomly share a video, uh, which is not something I am known to do. Um, but in this moment, I was led to share one just with my phone while I was in my truck. I was then allowed to upload it to the AOC Network Instagram page. And this was a message that now I believe makes sense. It needed to be heard for this season, for this time that we are entering. So take to heart what you will hear in light of what we've just discussed here. God allows you to go through things, not to break you, but to test you. Because once you get on the other side of the test is the blessing. When you go through hard times, no matter what it is, don't look at it as, oh God, why is this happening to me? No, look at it as an opportunity to pass the test. If you live long enough, you're going to have some type of a test, whether it's a financial thing, health thing, or relationship thing. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I personally, this is just me personally, I don't, it's, I don't like the word of that test. Because at the end of the day, living in this world, the hardships are going to come no matter what. Just because the way this world has been designed, it's like it's it's built off of man-made construct at this point in time. And man is so flawed, like no matter what, something flawed is going to end up happening to you. So don't don't look at it so much as, oh, God is giving me this test and I need I need to pass it. So, no, it's really just you're living in the world, having faith in God, no matter what comes towards you, whether it's good or the bad. I'm not discrediting what he's saying. I'm just telling you guys the way I think about it. That, and you have to look at that thing as a as an opportunity like this is it this is my shot god is about to allow me to experience the joseph thing the, the the job thing he's allowing me to experience something that's going to really be great for his kingdom and great for my testimony but for me to experience that i have to first go through this test so every test you encounter don't look at it as a negative look at it as a positive because it's an opportunity to demonstrate your faithfulness to God how can you demonstrate your faithfulness to God if you've never had to go through an extreme test that would have taken you out if it wasn't for the grace of God yeah yeah you need to have a story yeah. where you can say if it wasn't for God I would have never survived that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it wasn't for my <laughs> yeah. faith in God, I would have never gotten through that. So if you haven't had an experience like that yet, just keep on living. It's going to come. <laughs> yeah, and remember yeah, yeah. this message. When it arrives, don't wallow in depression. You say, wow, this is my chance. <laughs> this is my opportunity. I'm about to, I'm about to show God. Yeah. Even, babe, I lost everything. He is my king. I'm going to show God that even if I was having a health crisis and it seemed that there was no way out and it seemed my prayers weren't being answered, Jesus is still my king. I'm about to show God that when it seems like everything in my life is falling apart, Jesus is still king. I'm still going to praise his name. I'm still going to glory him. Why? Because you have a test to pass. And on the other side of the test is the blessing. What does it look like? 
that, that, that all make that all makes sense. It all ties together. Like especially from what he brought in from the beginning about how God's God's power is made perfect in your weakness. So usually when you're when you're experiencing a test, it's like, oh, feel a little bit weak right now. You know what I'm saying? Then when God pulled through, and then when God pulled through, it's like, bet that's a testimony. Ooh faithful when you're going through things. I was looking at the story of uh, Paul and Silas when they were thrown in prison. They were preaching the gospel, thrown in prison, and they praised God while they were in prison, and then the gates were opened. It wasn't their complaining that allowed God to free them. It wasn't them saying to God, you know, Lord, you know, we've been praising you. We've been preaching your name. How can you allow us to end up in jail? It wasn't that. It was the fact that even when they were going through that, they continued to praise God and worship him and say, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are mighty. You are amazing. And when heaven saw that they were praising God even during their trial, their test or storm, the gates were open and they were released. What's the message here? Same with Joseph. What is the message here? When you are going through a storm, a trial, a test, Heaven wants to see if you can pass it and be faithful. And a, a big indicator that you are being faithful is your praise. That's a form of showing that no matter what, you're still going to be faithful. And so as we move into this next year, I want you to remember this. If you ever go through a storm, ever go through a trial, don't let it take away your praise. Don't let it take away your obedience, your faithfulness. That's the thing that proves to God and everyone around you and to yourself that you're passing the test. This is what we're going to do, is pass the tests as they arrive. Because it only adds to your test testimony. And God's going to use it for his glory and for your benefit too. God bless you. All right, guys. So basically... I guess to sum it all up, the title was Something Biblical May Come in 2023. And I mean, having that title in the correlation to the video, I'm going to just put together that, that what biblical is going to happen in 2023. Let's just say you have a test and something you need to overcome. Look to God. Be faithful. Overcome that test. The same the test, the same exact way Job did. Uh, Silas and Paul, you know, and Joseph and all the other people. Just have faith. Alright guys, so that's this video. I hope you guys did enjoy. Make sure you do have a blessed day. Peace.